That's fine. I, and I don't have to, but mm -hmm. I usually don't, but sometimes I think it might be helpful to someone else. I'm going to recap this real quick for the recording then. So the buyer's got more inventory. Inventory is an asset and it goes up with the debit. We also have more accounts payable, more debt, and liability goes up with the credit. The seller has more accounts receivable and asset goes up with the debit, more sales, which is revenue, and it goes up with the credit debt. The seller also has less inventory. Inventory is an asset, it goes down. Assets go down with a credit. So I'm gonna skip me a line and come in here and put my credit to inventory, to make that asset go down. And again, in this case, the amount's given. That makes it simple. When I bought the inventory, it was an asset to me. What does it become to me when I sell it? An expense. Of cost of goods. An expense we call cost of goods sold. Exactly. And you're welcome to abbreviate that. But the key is to remember that that is an expense. So I'm going to debit cost of goods sold to make that expense go up. I'm going to credit inventory to make that asset go down. All right. The appropriate party pays a freight bill. Well, we got to look at the terms. FOB shipping point. FOB shipping point says that legal title to the goods passes at the point of origin. When we put them on the plane, the train, the boat, whatever, to send it to the customer, at that moment, they become the property of the buyer. So when they're actually out there in transit, who do they belong to, the buyer or the seller? Is the it buyer. The buyer. They change. I, I like to use the example of, of sending something to a company in England. Again, I drive to Charleston, I put it on the boat then. If it's at the shipping point, ownership to the goods changes hands at that minute when I put it on the boat there in Charleston. So then it becomes the property of the buyer. The um, buyer owns the goods while they're out there in the ocean. The buyer's got to pay the freight cost. When the buyer pays the freight cost, they do so with a debit to what account? Delivery. That's for the seller. Because think about it, only the seller delivers goods, if that helps you remember. Right. Okay. When the, this is one I told you students don't like, so they better highlight oh, it. Is it inventory? Delivery. Yeah. We're going to debit inventory to make that asset go up. Okay. And you say, do we have more inventory? Well, no, we don't. But did the inventory cost me more? Well, it did. Because if I had to put the bill for the freight to get it to me, in effect, I just paid more for the inventory, didn't I? So... When the buyer pays the freight costs, they do so with a debit to inventory. And my credit in this case, I would, we paid it, so I'm going to have less cash and as it goes down for credit. Seller does none, no entries at all. Only one of the two parties reports the freight costs, but never both. All right. Next thing we're going to send back for the merchandise. Don't like it, send it back. Have we paid for it yet? No. Will they give me a cash refund? No, we're just going to reduce our debt, the amount that I owe. So what do I have less of? What's one thing? Inventory. I have less inventory. Inventory is an asset. It goes down with a credit. So let's skip a line. Let's come in here and credit inventory. All right, for the 300. What else do I have less of when I send that stuff back? Accounts payable. Accounts payable. My debt has gone down. I don't owe them as much money anymore. So we're going to debit accounts payable to make that liability go down. So debit accounts payable to make my liability go down. Credit inventory to make that asset go down. All right. Where the returns get downright complicated is on the seller's books. I have encouraged you to probably just memorize two pieces of this. The first piece is my debit, which goes to customer refunds payable. All right. Remember, on my books I've, in the adjusting entry, I, I've put myself a liability for customer refunds payable and an asset for estimated returns inventory that are still on my books. When I actually issue those refunds, I need to be making those two accounts and kind of whittle down. So we're going to debit customer refunds payable to whittle down that liability that I put on my books in the adjusting entry. That's one of the hard parts. Um, 
what else does the buyer have less on? I'm sorry, what else does the seller have less on when the customer brings that item back to me and we reduce what they owe? Cash. If we gave them a cash refund, that'd be right. But we didn't give them a cash refund. <laughs> we reduced what they owe me instead because they haven't paid me yet. Then what else do I have less off? Accounts receivable. Now, you, you would be exactly right, Melissa. If they had paid me already, I would give them a cash refund. Okay, I would give them a cash refund, but that has not happened yet. I'm just going to reduce the balance of that. All right, well, the second thing is to update the inventory because our assumption is we're going to take this. There's nothing wrong with the inventory. They just didn't like the color or the size. We're going to take it, put it back on the shelf and sell it to the next customer. So what do I now have more of? Inventory. Inventory. Inventory is an asset, and assets go up with a debit. That one's going to be for the 120 cost of the inventory. And this credit is one that I've really just suggested we probably need to memorize. It's one of those accounts lingering from the adjusting entry. It's estimated returns inventory, which is an asset. When I credit it, I make it go down. So we're taking it out of this kind of I will call it kind of like pretend inventory that we put it in in the adjusting entry of what we expected to get back. When we actually get it back, we take it out of that estimated inventory and we put it into my real inventory. Again, I think these two parts here are easy. The accounts receivable and the inventory, they make good sense. I'm just gonna, I would really just suggest that we commit these two to memory. I've tried to explain it in the best way possible, but it's still, it, it's a little more challenging. Those are when merchandise is returned, correct? Only when, when it's returned, and that's only on the seller's books. On the buyer's books, it's really pretty easy again. It's just on the seller's books for this time. All right, the buyer pays on day 30. Who can tell me how much we owe right now? 2,000. We started off with 2,000. Did anything oh. else happen? 1700. Good. We started off with 2000, but then what happened right here? We sent back 300. So my accounts payable had a credit balance of 2000. We debited for 300. That leaves me owing $1,700. So that's what I've got to pay. So what do we have less of when I make this payment? Accounts payable. Accounts payable. And that's the liability, and liabilities go down with the debit. What else do I have less of when I make this payment? Cash. Cash. That's an asset and it goes down with the credit. Say that with confidence. And doesn't this entry look very familiar? Yes. We've been making that entry since chapter two, haven't we? This one's going to look familiar also. Now we are the seller who is receiving that payment from the customer. What do I have more of? Cash. Cash, an asset goes up with a debit. And what do we have less of when that customer pays me? Accounts receivable. Receivable. An asset goes down with a credit. And again, hopefully that looks really familiar to you because we have been doing that entry from chapter two. So I'm trying to remind you of that so you don't look at chapter five and think, oh, these are all brand new entries to me. They really aren't. They really are just adding on to a lot of what we've learned already. Are we okay with those? Those are just really basic entries right there. No complications did we throw in. No terms, no nothing. We're starting off with the basics here. All right, the next one, the buyer purchases $3,000 merchandise pays cash, and they also collect 7% sales tax. We're not going to worry about making that on the buyer's books. We're just going to make that on this entry on the seller's books. Well, let's, put, let's start off without any amounts in it. What does the seller have more of? Inventory. The seller. Oh, sorry. Um. Is it sales? Okay, more sales. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put me a credit to sales. I'll fill in these amounts in just a minute. Sales is revenue and revenue goes up with the credit. Very good. 
What else does the silver have more of? Is it counts receivable? Mm, wait, wait, no, no. Uh, is it a cash sale or a credit sale? This is a cash. So we have more cash. Cash is an asset and it goes up with a debit, right? I think it confused you because we didn't do the buyer part first, okay? Yeah. So this was simply making a cash sale. We have more cash, cash is an asset and it goes up with the debit, sales is revenue, goes up with the credit. Now, first off, what is the amount of my sales? What's my actual sales in this example? A thousand? Three thousand. Oh, oh. The sales itself is just 3,000. But am I gonna collect just 3,000? No. no. Gotta collect an extra, what, 7%? 7% so of 3,000 is what, 210? Mm -hmm. so how much cash are they going to give me? $3,210. $3,000 for the stuff, 210 for the tax. Then more cash and asset goes up with the debit. More sales revenue goes up with the credit. Now that doesn't balance, so does it? No. One more credit. Let's think about that $210. Is that my money to keep? No, because you... I owe that back to the government, right? Yeah. So what does that sound like when we have some money, but we owe it to someone else? Some sort of a... Payable. Sales okay. tax. Sales tax payable is exactly what we're going to call it. Sales tax payable. Make sure you put the word payable on it. It is a liability because I owe it to the government. I didn't ask you for this entry, but sometime down the road, I got to take that money and send it to the government. Don't I? When I do that, I would debit sales tax payable to make the liability go down and credit cash to make that asset go down later on when I pay it. All right. My second entry is to update the inventory. What do I have less of when I make this sale? Inventory. inventory. All right. Inventory is an asset. Assets go down with a credit. The amount of this is going to be how much this stuff cost me? Thousand. dollars. And when I bought the inventory, it was an asset to me. When I sell it, it becomes what to me? An expense. An expense that I call cost oh. of. So my debit goes to cost of goods sold for how much that item cost me. And again, I just kind of like to figure out that credit first because I think it makes it easier for us to remember the debit. If you think of the cost of goods sold first, that's perfectly fine also. So what did we add into this problem? Just the sales tax, just the sales tax. So when we collect sales tax, that's a credit to sales tax payable. It increases the amount of my debit to cash or accounts receivable. All right, well, let's go to three. We buy $6,000 merchandise, pay cash. We get a 25% trade discount. The cost of what was sold was 2,400. Well, quick review on trade discounts. Trade discounts are simply a reduction in the selling price of an item. That means I'm not really selling this for $6,000. How much am I selling it for, really? $4,500. $4,500. Because 25% of $6,000 would be $1,500. $6,000 minus the $1,500 would be $4,500. So forget about the, the $6,000. Forget about the 25%. It's a $4,500 sale. All right. But let's be the buyer first. Let's be the buyer first. What do I have more of? I'm buying stuff to resell. Inventory. Inventory. So the buyer's going to debit inventory for forty-five hundred. And what does the buyer have less of? Cash. Cash and asset goes down with the credit. So we're going to debit inventory to make that asset go up. We're going to credit cash to make that asset go down. 
I'm gonna let you do the the seller on your own. How's that? Nothing new. Just it's a forty five hundred dollar sale. All right, what does the seller have more of? Cash. Cash, and that's that goes up with a debit. So it's debit cash for 4,500. What else does the seller have more of? Sales. Sales. That's revenue. Revenue goes up with a credit. Second entry is to update the inventory part of it's gone. We have less inventory and asset goes down with a credit. The inventory becomes an expense to me when I sell it. So I have more cost of goods sold. We're going to debit that expense to make it go up. And I'm going to credit the inventory to make it go down. So how does that compare to the entry we started off with? Very similar, right? The only complication we put into this one was a trade discount. What do we do with a trade discount? We simply reduce the amount at which the buyer records a purchase and the seller records a sale. The 6,000 doesn't show up anywhere. The 1,500 doesn't show up anywhere. We just record the purchase and the sale at 4,500. All right. Well, let's do another. Buyer buys $7,500 merchandise, 310 net 30 FOB shipping point. The cost of what we sold was $5,000. What's the complication I introduced into this one? The terms. The terms. So we're going to use the net method of recording the purchase and the sale, which assumes that we always will take the discount. Our plan is to always take the discount here. All right. We're not going to record this as a $7,500 purchase or sale, are we? We're going to take mm -hmm. 7500 times 3%. Is that 225? Yes, what I got, yeah. Uh, and then 7500 minus 225 is... 72.75. Sounds good to me. All right. So let's be the buyer first. We have just made a purchase. We're not going to record it at $7,500. We're going to record it at $7,275. What do I have more of? Inventory. Again, the assumption is everything we buy, we buy to resell. Debit it for the $7,275. And what else do we have more of? Accounts payable. It's payable. Liability, and it goes up with the credit. Now, the good news is once we figure the number out for the buyer, we can use that same number for the seller. All right. What does the seller have 7275 more of? That's receivable. Receivable. What else does the seller have more of? 7275 more off. Sales. Sales. That's revenue, and it goes up with the credit. The second entry for the buyer is always to relieve its inventory. In other words, to take out of inventory the item that we sold, because every time we make a sale, we have less inventory. The cost of what I sold, again, in this case, given to you, $5,000. All right. That second entry always looks the same every time we make it. It's always a debit to what? Cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold and a credit to? Inventory.
So the one complication we threw in here was the discount. How do we handle that? We simply reduce the amount at which we record the purchase and the sale. We assume the discount's gonna be taken, so we take that off. The appropriate party pays the freight bill. FOB shipping point says that legal title to the goods passes at the point of origin. When I put it on the plane, the train, the boat, whatever, at that moment, to send it to the customer, right at that minute, it becomes the property of the buyer. So the whole time the goods are in transit, who do they belong to, the buyer or the seller? If it be shipping point, I drive it down to Charleston and I put it on a boat. Presto, at that moment I put it on the boat, it becomes a property of the buyer. buyer. Yeah, right. oh. They're in the ocean, who do they belong to the whole time? The buyer. Because remember, I drove it down there. As soon as I put it on the boat, at that minute, changes hands, becomes a property of the buyer. But it's got to get in the ocean all the way from Charleston up to England, right? So the whole time that it's out there in the ocean, it belongs to the buyer. The buyer's going to record the freight cost, and they do so with a debit to what? Inventory. That's the one students don't like. Give me a heads up what students don't like. Since we paid it, we're going to credit cash. So when the buyer pays the freight costs, they do so with a debit inventory. Debiting inventory makes it go up. Not that we have more inventory, but my inventory did cost me more, and we want that account to show the full cost of that inventory. All right, what's that one? Shipping point. It's going to be paid by the buyer with the debit to inventory. All right, now another one of these returns. All right, now. Returns are pretty straightforward on the buyer's books. All right, have we paid for these yet? No. No. So will they give me a cash refund? No. We're going to have reduce the amount that we owe, okay? I want you to jot down the accounts only. Just the accounts. Don't want to put down any amounts yet. Let's just do the accounts yet on the buyer's books. What does the buyer have less of? Inventory. Inventory. Okay. Inventory is an asset. It goes down. Assets go down with a credit. So let's skip a line. Okay. And let's credit inventory. What else does the buyer have less of when they send this stuff back? Accounts payable. payable. We haven't paid for it yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're just going to reduce what we owe. Now, the only trick here is. If we took 3% off of the original purchase, we've also got to take 3% off the return. So it's not going to be a $600 return. We're going to take 3% of that. It says we've got to knock $18 off of it. 600 minus 18 says we're going to record that return for 582. So again, it's not going to be a return of 600. If we took 3% off of the purchase, we got to take 3% off of the return. So less accounts payable goes down with the debit, more less inventory goes down with the credit, but the amount's 582. The seller, they're the ones who have the kind of weird entries for the customer return. Some of it we're going to memorize. We're going to memorize the two outside pieces. We'll figure out the two inside pieces. My debit for a customer return always goes to the customer refund payable. And that would be for the 582. What else does the seller have more of when the customer comes to us and brings stuff back and we have to give them a refund? Inventory. We do. All right. Let's let actually, let's finish this one up. That's going to be part of the next entry. So oh yeah, you're right. So yeah, it would yeah. be. What do we have? Five hundred eighty-two dollars less off. Accounts receivable. Accounts receivable. Very good. That asset goes down with the credit. That customer owes me less. All right. When we bring back, when they bring back stuff to. I'm not gonna give them money back because they haven't paid me yet. I'm just gonna reduce the amount that they have. 
Now the second entry says, well, they're bringing me the stuff back. There's nothing wrong with it. They didn't like the color or the size. I'm gonna put it on the shelf and sell it to the next customer. So what do I have more of? Inventory. Inventory. And we're gonna put it back on our books for what it cost me. And the credit again, kind of the odd part, estimated returns inventory. And these are the two I just kind of suggest you might want to memorize. The ones in the middle, we can figure those out. We have less accounts receivable. They don't owe me as much money. Accounts receivable is an asset goes down with it. Or inventory, an asset goes up with the debt. Okay, so far? All right, the next one, the buyer pays on day 10. Well, we got to be really careful here about the amount, about the amount. Based on the first entry, how much do we owe? 72.75. 72.75. But then did anything else happen that affects that? Yes. We, inventory. we sent back the 582, right? That makes my accounts payable go down. I might have to help me with that one, 66 something. We got 6,990. Yeah. I think that's wrong. Around 60. 93. 693, sorry. Is that right? That sounds good. Because I did 7725 takeaway 582, sorry. I had to put a one beneath the other and then I can figure it. I can't just subtract them going across page like that. Doesn't work the same. That works good. We agree, 66. 93. So understand that's the balance in accounts payable in my books right now. Do you see we have a credit of 7275 and a debit of 582? If we had actually posted these to the general ledger, you would see that we have a balance of 6693 left. So that's what we're going to pay. What do we have less of when we make this payment? I've got something crawling around. I got to take care of him. I'm sorry. He's got a long. I don't know what he is. He's kind of little, but I'm sorry. I don't like to kill him, but every now and then I have to. <laughs> okay, he just shut up. Oh, I don't know. All right, sorry about that. I got distracted. What do we have less of? Sounds payable. Sounds payable. That's a liability. Liabilities go down with the debit. And the balance in accounts payable is um, 6693. So that's what I need to make it go down by. What else do I have less of when I make this payment? Cash. Cash, an asset goes down with the credit. Just look at that entry. We've been doing that entry since chapter two, right? Paying off a debt, that has not changed. Same thing on the seller's books when we get paid. What do we have more of? Cash. Cash. That goes up with a debit. And what do we have less of? Accounts receivable. Cool. That simply is a chapter two entry. There's nothing new about that now. All right, that was nice, but then dead gummit, they messed around and they didn't pay on day 10, they didn't take the discount. Well, let's look at this entry to get us started. We're still gonna have to debit accounts payable, aren't we? We're still going to have to credit cash. Let's just go on and put that in. I have to squeeze something else in. Actually, let me suggest you leave a line between those two. Just a friendly word of advice there. But let's think about these one at a time. What's the balance in accounts payable on my books right now? Six, six, nine, three. Six, six, nine, three, right? Same thing as we figured before. But the tricky part is, let's see how much we really have to pay. Ignoring all the discounts, entry number one was for 7,500, correct? The return 
says we sent back 600. How much are we actually going to pay them? 6900. 6900. And that's the 7500 minus the 600. That entry doesn't balance, does it? We have a loss discount here. On the buyer's books, the loss discount gets debited to inventory. And the discount's what? Uh, 207. Whatever it takes, it's going to be minus 18. 217, is that right? 207. 207. Well, whatever you say, that sounds good. 900 take away 6693, 207. That looks good. Thank you. Dangerous for me to try to do math in my head now. <laughs> so, again, that's one students aren't very fond of. The loss discount gets debited to inventory. Why do we have more inventory? No. But did it cost me more? Yeah. Originally, we had shown the fact that my inventory cost me $66.93, right? This debit minus this credit. But it really ended up costing me $6,900, right? So we need to debit inventory for another two hundred seven dollars to make it go up. Well, let's be on the buyer's books. What do I have more of? Cash. Cash. How much cash did I get? Well, we already know that, right? $6,900. What do I have less of when the customer pays me? Accounts payable. Or accounts receivable. This exact same credit right here, right? Again, it doesn't balance. We have a loss discount on the seller's books. The loss discount gets credited where? To sales. Why is that? Well, up here we credited sales originally for the 7275. Then we had to make it go down because of the return. We're getting that up to what we actually ended up selling the item. So what did we throw in a complication in this set? We threw in the discount, okay? The terms. That affects not only the original purchase sale, it also affects any returns that are involved. All right, let's do another one. We're going to skip the buyer this time. We're just going to be the seller. So we are selling $5,000 merchandise. We get cash for it. 20% trade discount and 8% sales tax. So we're kind of combining things now, right? We're going to combine a trade discount with the sales discount, with the sales tax. All right, first off, take into consideration the trade discount. A trade discount. Mm -hmm. What's that going to do to my amount? Just the trade discount portion of it. What's that going to get my amount to? Yeah, the trade discounts is going to be what? 20% is $1,000, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to take that amount off. So 5,000 minus 1,000. It's 4000 So right now we're at a $4,000 transaction, right? But what else do we need to consider? Sales tax. Sales tax. Sales tax. Now the sales tax is going to be charged on the 4000 not the 5000 So 4000 times 8% says we're going to have, what, $320 in tax. All right, we're the seller making the sale. What do we have more of? What do we have more That's of? Receivable. Except it was? Oh, cash. wait, it's cash, so it's cash. All right, so we got more cash. How much cash are we gonna get? 4320. 4320, 4,000 for the sale plus 320 for the tax. What else does the seller have more of? Sales. Sales. How much is my sales though? 
4,000. 4,000. That other 320 is not mine to keep, is it? I've collected some money for the government and now I've got to send it to the government. Sales tax payable. Sales tax payable, good. And again, please be sure you put the word payable on here. This is one where I'm not going to give credit unless you put the word payable. So cash and asset goes up with a debit. Sales revenue goes up with a credit. Sales tax payable, a liability goes up with a credit. My second entry is to update inventory. I'm going to debit cost of goods sold, same as we have been doing, 1300 And I'm going to credit inventory. So what would throw into this example? A trade discount and a sales tax base. We didn't cover that on the buyer's books, but on the buyer's books, it would be simple. It'd be debit inventory, credit cash, and their amount would be the 4320. In other words, that sales tax just goes into their inventory account because that's their full cost of acquiring the inventory. All right, let's do another. We're just going to do the sales side of it, just the sales side. So the buyer bought $8,000 merchandise, paying with their credit card, 5% sales tax, FOB destination. A credit card sale looks just like what to us? The seller. What does it look like? Cash. A cash sale. Looks just like a cash sale. So what's my amount going to be? Well, I'm going to start with 8,000. Anything else I need to take into consideration? The sales tax. All right, so 8,000 times 5% is what, 400. And now it's going to look just like a cash sale. What do I have more of? Cash. Cash and asset goes up with the debit. My debit to cash is going to be for what, the 8,400? 8,000 for the stuff plus 400 for the tax. What else do we have more of? We're the seller. Sales. Sales. But my sale is simply going to be for 8,000. How about another $400? I got it, but it's not mine to keep. I owe it to the government. What does that sound like? Sales tax. Sales tax payable. Sales tax payable. I owe that to the government. I got to send that to them in a couple of weeks. And the second entry just updates inventory, same as always. Debit cost of goods sold. Hundred and credit inventory. All right, the appropriate party pays the freight bill. FOB destination says that ownership of the goods changes hands when they arrive at their destination. So let's go back to my example in England. I drive down to England. I put the item on a boat. It's headed toward, um, I drive down to England. I can't drive to England, can I? That would be dangerous. I drive down to Charleston and I put it on a boat. That becomes the property of the buyer when it arrives in England. So the whole time it was out there in the Atlantic Ocean, who did it belong to, the buyer or the seller? The buyer. Ownership changes hands when it arrives at their destination. So only when it gets to England does ownership change hands. So the whole time it's in the ocean, it belongs to the seller, the seller. Okay, it's not gonna become the property of the buyer until, until they get it. So the whole time it's in transit, it belongs to the seller. The seller pays the freight cost and they do so with the debit to, anybody remember? Delivery, Inventory. delivery expense. Plain old expense is full credit cash because we paid it. 
Does that go on the seller side or the buyer side? Um, thank you. I think you're exactly right. I'm, I'm, I was looking at them like, because I had an inventory and cash for the buyer side. If, if the buyer pay it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I typed that at exactly the wrong place. Thank you very much. You're exactly right. The seller's going to pay it, not the buyer. So if it's the buyer paying it, it goes under inventory. Exactly. If it's the seller paying it, it goes under livery expense. Exactly. And then both crediting cash. Assuming we paid it. You know, paid it could it. be crediting accounts payable if it says we received a bill for it, but didn't pay it yet. But I'm keeping this. Okay, I got you. I got you. And remember, destination delivery expense. The two Ds, that will help you. You know what? I just realized I don't have a question on here about something, but let's talk about that. And that is, the good news is about a credit card sale is it looks just like a cash sale. That's the good news. The bad news is, is that the credit card company comes and charges me a fee at the end of the month. I really don't have that fee in here, I realize, but make sure you're okay with that entry. When we pay the fee to the credit card company, that's a debit to credit card expense and a credit to cash. A debit credit card expense and credit cash for that fee at the end of the month. I just don't have that in here. I might need to go back and add that in. All right. Let's do another. The buyer buys $5,500 merchandise on account, 210 net 30 FOB destination. Cost of merchandise to the seller was $3,000. What's the only complication in this one? There are terms. terms. All right, there are terms. I'm gonna let you be on your own for that one to be the buyer. Let's figure the amount first. 5,500, what percent do we knock off of it? Two. 100 times 2%, it's 110, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So 5,500 minus 110 is what, 40, 53, 90, I think. Is that right? Not right, y'all. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. All right. Take the discount off. What does the buyer have more off? Inventory. Inventory. An asset goes up with a debit. The amount's not 5500 It's 5390 And what does the buyer have more of also? Accounts payable. Accounts payable. The liability goes up with the credit. Good. All right. You're on your own. You're the seller. You're on your own. You're the seller. Seller have more off. Accounts receivable. Accounts receivable. Maybe go unlock the um, deadbolt for dad, please. What else does the seller have more off? Sales. Sales, that's revenue, goes up with the credit. Second entry always looks exactly the same. Debit cost of goods sold for the cost of what we sold credit inventory because we have less of it, part of it's gone. How'd we do on that one? 
It will. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any questions on that one? I mean, do you see what there, there's really just a couple of basic entries? And then we, we have a few little complications to add, but if you get the basic entries down, that's what's most important. Um, freight bill, FAB destination says that legal title to the goods passes when they arrive at the destination. Only when they arrive at the destination do they become the property. They, they transfer ownership from the seller to the buyer. So the whole time the goods are in transit, who do they belong to, the seller or the buyer? Seller? No, the whole time, they, they only change hands when they get to their destination. Okay. So the whole time they were out there, they belong to the seller. So the seller pays the freight cost with a debit to delivery expense. Destination, delivery, you got two Ds there, right? All right, so far, buyer pays on day 10. You're on your own for that. We could have done that back in chapter two. Does the buyer have less off? Accounts payable. Accounts payable. And the amount's just the $53.90. What else does the buyer have less off? Cash. I'll make it hard. Less accounts payable, liability goes down with the debit, less cash and asset goes down with the credit. Now we're the seller. We're receiving that incoming payment. What do we have more of? Cash. Cash and asset goes up with the debit. And what does the seller have less of when, when they receive this payment? Accounts receivable. Um, yeah, accounts receivable. Accounts receivable. And asset is down with the credit. So debit cash to make that asset go up, credit account receivable to make that asset go down. Chapter two completely, right? Nothing new there. All right, let's do one more. Another one of those dang returns there. Well, the buyer sends back $1,200 merchandise to the seller. Have they paid for it yet? No. Actually, they have. Look right here. They paid on day 10. Yes. When they paid, did they take the discount? Yes. Yeah. So what are we going to have to do to the return? We're going to have to take the discount off of the return also. Go on and put down your debit and credit. Put down your debit and credit first. We'll come back to the amount. Just the buyer is good for now. What does the buyer have more of when they send this stuff back? Accounts payable. We, we, but we've already paid it off. Remember, this entry has already taken place. We bought it on account, you're right. But then on day 10, we paid for it. We have paid for it in full. So will they give me a cash refund? Yes. I've already paid for it. So what do I have more okay. of? Cash. Cash and asset goes up with the debit. What do I have less of? Inventory. Inventory and asset goes down with the credit, okay? Now there's just one complication. When we bought the merchandise, we took the discount, didn't we? 
So guess what? When we return the merchandise, are they going to give me back the full amount? Well, no, because I didn't pay the full amount, did I? Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with our 1200 2% discount would be what, $24? So, oh, oh, I said 20%, that wouldn't work. That'd be one heck of a discount, wouldn't it? All right. Um, $1,200 minus that $24 discount says we're going to have a return of $1,176. All right. So the buyer is going to get $1,176 more cash back, and they will have less inventory by that same amount. The ones where returns get complicated is on the seller's books. The seller is going to debit that account called customer refunds payable by that $1,176. What else does the seller have less off when they issued this refund? Cash. We have less cash and that's it goes down with a credit. So let's credit cash. Again, the assumption is we're going. there's nothing wrong with this item. We're going to take it, put it back on the shelf, and sell it to the next customer. So what do we have more of? Inventory. 720. That's the 720, the amount given to me. My credit, again, goes to that a little bit odd account, estimated returns inventory. Again, my suggestion from this one, and this one is that we just kind of plan on memorizing that. Um, the credit to cash makes good sense. We have less cash goes down with the credit and we have more inventory goes up with the debit. The other two, again, are whittling down the accounts we put in our books in the adjusting entry to estimate our returns. So I have a question and I'm noticing a pattern. Um, when you have a return, you have your customer refund payable and your estimate returns inventory, but in the middle, you always have us keep that blank. And going back to the buyer side, if it's cash and inventory, is that what goes there in the middle? I mean, and then if it's accounts payable, then it becomes accounts receivable. I, I get that. This is always going to be a debit. But let me tell you, of, of these four, if I'm understanding correctly, okay, of these four elements on that journal entry, three of them will always be the same. Okay. You will always debit customer refunds payable. You mm -hmm. will always debit inventory. You will always credit estimated returns inventory. This is the one though, that could be something different. I right. gave them a cash refund is why I credit cash. If I had just reduced the amount that they owed me, I would credit accounts receivable. Gotcha. So these three, you're exactly right. Those three are set in stone. This one, you could be either cash or accounts receivable. Okay. That count? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, how do y'all feel about the journal entries now? Better. Yeah, I feel a lot better. Well, I'm going to tell you the ones on the quiz are pretty straightforward. And we've had a lot of the complications on the quiz, quite honestly. I want to make sure we got the basic ones here. But these extra practice problems, you know, you see what I've thrown in. I've thrown in credit cards, I've thrown in sales tax, I've thrown in sales terms, and I've thrown in trade discounts. So the, if you can do these, you're in really good shape because we've thrown in all the complicated factors right here. And they won't appear on the quiz this yeah. Monday? Or what? If we're going to have a Monday, it's going to be pretty straightforward, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. These will definitely be on the test, though. So you know, you, you're doing the more complicated ones right now, which is really good. So when you see it on the quiz, hopefully it's going to be these are the really basic ones then. You know, we kind of started off with more basic ones, didn't we? You know, back yeah. on the first page, we, we, we had the more basic ones. So the ones in the quiz are, are more basic, but by the time we get to the test, you're going to have all the complications thrown in. So it's good that we're comfortable with that now. All right, does that get us going for today? Yes, ma'am. We might yes, come back on a later day again and and do some more of these, but, but we... We, we've kind of covered the bulk of them, honestly.
That makes sense? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Anything else I can help you with at this point? I think I'm all set. Okay. Well, 